Finally, the news we've all been waiting for has officially been announced. Today marks the day that we say welcome to Chelsea Football Club, Enzo Maresca. My friends, if you guys are gassed and excited by this news, if you believe in the club vision, if you believe in Enzo Maresca, hit that like button. Let's try and get 4K likes for Enzo. I know you guys can do that. Sit back, relax, and let's break down all the latest news from Enzo Maresca's announcement. As we know, Today, Enzo Maresca has signed a five-year deal with an option to extend by a further year if he triggers certain clauses in his contract. Rumours suggest that he's set to earn around £5 million a year and we agree to pay a £10 million compensation fee with Leicester to get this deal completed. Now, I guess this is small solace for Leicester because they are kind of struggling to comply with profit and sustainability rules, but I don't think they're too impressed because in their official statement after this announcement, they said, given the promising foundations established during his single season with us, the club is disappointed that Enzo has decided at this stage that he no longer wants to be part of our vision. I'm sorry to break it to you, Leicester C. I feel like this season you're going to have a rude awakening to life back in the Prem, but let's keep things real. Your vision is not as 4K as ours. You don't have the talent, you don't have the players, you don't have the projects, and you can't offer Enzo Maresca the opportunities to be a guaranteed top-class success in this league. So for Enzo, I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision, but he made the right decision at this stage of his career. But before I give my thoughts and opinions behind this, let's continue on with this news first, because as we know, he's set to be joined by six staff members. They will include, of course, former goalkeeper and Willy Caballero, Danny Walker, Michelle de Barnardin, I'm so sorry, I'm terrible pronouncing names, Marcos Alvarez, Javier Molina, and Roberto Vitellio. And of course, he's going to be the key coach when it comes to creating that connection between the youth players and the first team, because that's something that Enzo wants. And I like that because he announced himself with Man City's PL2 team. I like managers that have come through the youth setup because it tells that they have a bit of like a long-term thinking behind how they assess the team and the chances they can give to academy players. I think that's the right thing. And it's good to see that finally, there's another manager now that believes in the youth. Let's hope as the season goes on that some opportunities are given out to them. But we are learning. Enzo Maresca has asked for Chelsea's data room to provide performance analysis on every single player from the youth level to the first team after agreeing to take over as our new manager. He's also asked for information on every person he will be working with at the training ground. So this really sums up his meticulous nature as a coach, as manager. As I said, he's come through all the ranks, even being a manager himself. He was a coach. Then he became an assistant manager. Then he became a manager for an academy team. Then he became a manager professionally. So he's made the step ups that you want to see, right? And I personally feel that with all the experience he's accumulated, I don't think that he'll be phased by this opportunity. I think he'll feel ready for this. I think this is the moment he's been waiting for, to be honest with you. And again, for the projects we can potentially offer, you don't turn this opportunity down. Let's read the first statements from our owners and our directors. Lawrence Stewart and Paul Winsley state that we are delighted to welcome Enzo to Chelsea. He has proven himself to be an excellent coach capable of delivering impressive results with an exciting and identifiable style. Enzo has deeply impressed us in our discussions leading up to his appointment. His ambitions and work ethic align with those of the club. We thoroughly look forward to working with him. And obviously, Let's read the first words from our new manager in Enzo Maresca and as he says, to join Chelsea, one of the biggest clubs in the world, is a dream of any coach. It is why I am so excited by this opportunity. I look forward to working with a very talented group of players and staff to develop a team that continues the club's tradition of success and makes our fans proud. So these are some big statements and as we know, we were kind of open in terms of who the manager could be and I think with our directors, we definitely let the managers and candidates sell themselves in meetings. I think Enzo Maresca sold himself the best. I'm sure with his meticulous nature, he knew exactly how to impress them. And obviously his ideas around the players. These are the key things which basically sold the club towards hiring him out of all the other candidates that we could have hired for a fraction of the fee and a fraction of the price. We cannot forget that. This is a 
Big commitment paying 10 million, especially after you were the club that spent nearly 20 million in total to hire Graham Potter and his staff to bring them here, to discard them like, what, six, seven months later. So to do that again, must really mean that this time, you know you've got the right guy. This time, you feel confident that he will finally fine tune this team and get the very best out of players, the directors have had full control in signing and hiring for this football club. So again, I don't want to get too gassed and too carried away, but I like to afford some grace at least right, because I'd like to try and find that balance, you know, that balance between being realistic, hopeful, but not too negative. I know sometimes in ball conversations, it either just becomes either really positive, all stars, you don't see any negatives, or the opposite side, but it's only doom and gloom, only bad. And I know sometimes people think that I'm like, oh, Mr. Positive for the sake of it. I don't see it that way, but I try to find it in that happy medium between what really is going on, in my opinion. I like to see both sides in the conversation. And this is why I feel optimistic around Enzo Maresca. But I don't necessarily feel like, wow, I know that this guy is set to become the guy that finally transforms us and finally gets us winning and firing on all cylinders. I feel like after seeing how many other managers have coped at the football club, I'm not saying that Enzo Maresca is worse than them or anything like that. It's just the reality that our expectations don't match conclusions once the season ends. So because of that reality that I've been witnessing at this club for the past two years, I'm going into next season and pre-season very open-minded, open-minded to learn, to give an opportunity to see what Enzo Maresca does. I don't want to place silly expectations. I don't have any biases against him. I've said in my previous videos, I wouldn't have necessarily gone for the positional play route, but that doesn't mean that I'm not open to it, especially when Enzo Maresca seems to be, by the sounds of things, an expert in this style. And I think now that he has access to a stronger, higher caliber of technical player compared to Leicester C. All these criticisms I kept reading about Enzo having a plan B, I've discussed this before, but come on, you have a limited squad you're working with and he deserves a lot of credit for taking over a Leicester City team that were down in the dumps. They've been struggling with this possession style under Rodgers, under Claude Le Pew, and for him to come in to bring back that style, but to elevate that and to get them an instant promotion back after dealing with some of those difficulties, I think he deserves a lot of credit. To find those workarounds with what he's left with in his squad, I think he deserves a lot of credit. And all this plan B stuff, I think people miss the point. You know, people think plan B is, oh, okay, if the possession's not working, why can't we play it long? Or why aren't we gonna play counter-attack? Or why won't we play with two strikers up front? That isn't the most sophisticated way to understand what a plan B actually means, but a plan B actually means how do you re-strategize? How do you now move the ball, for example? What are the solutions you look to find in-game? What's the manager doing with his subs? What's he, what instructions is he giving the players in terms of, okay, we're behind in the game now. We're struggling to break through this bus. How are you guys going to change things? Okay, you know what? Fall back in the pivot. I want you to push higher. We're going to have six up front now. We're going to have another midfield player crashing the books. We're going to try and make things happen. And that's something that he consistently showed. And even though Leicester struggled, a lot more during the second half of the season, I would still say a lot of his tactical ideas and his management, in-game management-wise, and the solutions he found in-game, he was able to get Leicester back through a lot of situations where things weren't looking too great for him. And obviously, when you're working with a caliber of player where I think their biggest weakness realistically last season was, okay, teams will just park the bus, sit back, and play on the counter-attack, I think it's not a surprise that will be your Achilles heel when you have so many slow centre-backs. Slow centre-backs that you never asked for. So slow centre-backs that you must work with. But now that you're coming to us, I think the possibilities open up now. I mean, you have a squad which, on paper, I'm sure Enzo was salivating. What? And Kunku? I've got Enzo Fernandez to be my metronome in midfield. Harry Wings was good. I think he's more Regista Jorginho, but he's not Enzo Fernandez. Short distances, medium distances, long distances, playmaking, ability, press resistance. This is a different level of player. You didn't have a Moises Caicedo. You didn't have a defense. But now you're set to inherit players that were out injured last season. For Farnas back pre-season. We've got Badia, who looked good as the season ended. 
Levi Cole was back. I don't know why this fan base all of a sudden is forgetting it's one of the best young center backs in the world for his age. I don't know why fans always do this stuff. Reese James is back. Gusto. We've got a younger caliber of player now that have got their first taste of life in the Premier League. They have more relationships together. They have a better understanding of each other's game. And then you're set to inherit on top of that too. Not even Nankunka, but Cole Palmer, one of the best young players in the world last season. A player that you already know from your time at Man City. Him and Romeo Lavia. Leicester City fans, don't be mad at this guy for taking the opportunity when it came his way because this was the right thing to do. And the fact that he has the balls and confidence in himself to know, listen, I don't care if I'm upsetting people. I, I know that this was meant for me. This is my destiny. I'm here to take this moment and I know I can be a success here. That is the energy. That's the vibe. That's the confidence that I'm kind of feeling, which makes me feel, but I don't want to be unrealistic because as I've said before, I might have preferred personally more of a different approach to playing. And I think we did have seen some small successes under Pochettino, especially against teams that kind of like play possession football and then we hit them on the counter-attack. We did show that we could have potentially been maybe a different type of team with a different style. And, it, you know, my fears with positional play sometimes is that it requires a level of patience, right? When you understand the nature of this football, it's about how you manipulate the opposition, their structures, their shape. A lot of times that involves a lot of precision and patience in your play. You have to move the ball sideways, left to right. You'll play forwards, then you'll play it back because you're waiting to find the right opportunity to create that overload against the opposition because when you're constantly maneuvering and moving their shape, eventually one of these guys is gonna get tired, will lose concentration, won't get back in their shape. And that is when Mareska's teams know we smell blood. We attack down here, we make things happen. But as I've stressed, this football requires patience. And I do think there will be an adjustment time for the players to understand how to master this way of playing. Because it's not a type of football that gets mastered in the space of one month or two months. It's something that gradually improves. You'll have your base level one level, then you'll move to level two intermediary levels, and then you're hoping to get to level three expert level when you can really start to fine tune and add more advanced complexity to the way you're playing. But us as a fan base need to have that patience and give that grace to be able to understand that this is a long-term thing at play now. I think we have the players now where hopefully we can transition a bit quicker and easier because I don't necessarily feel like some of the things they were doing under Pochettino will be that dissimilar for Enzo Maresca in the sense that Maresca now has to completely like revamp and like fine tune and re-educate these guys on how to move the ball and play possession football. I don't think so. So I feel a bit of hopefulness that maybe the team will be able to understand this football a bit more seamlessly because we have signed a lot of players who have played possession football throughout their careers, right? I am going to afford some grace. I know I keep stressing this. Yes, I think it's easy for us to maybe have flashbacks, maybe more like horrific circumstances, like our struggles maybe under Thomas Tuchel to break down those low blocks, those defensive blocks. Listen, as a fan base, playing against defensive blocks, low blocks has been our main Achilles heel forever. We can't create anything against them. We saw these same struggles under Mauricio Pochettino. Will Maresca finally be the manager to get us finally to find solutions against the low blocks? This is where a lot of eyes are going to be on him. And as I keep stressing, I think this is where a lot of people could lose patience quite quickly if they don't see instant results and gratification. But I, I feel like for all of us, myself, all of us in the fan base, we need to come with a bit more patience now. We might not all agree with this direction we're taking, but it's a direction that is our reality now. There's nothing we can do about that. And I just feel like with the amount of managers we've seen over the years, coming and going, hiring and getting sacked, I just think some long-term consistency is the most important thing now, regardless of anything. Reska has a five-year deal, and I hope that means something. I hope that means something. I hope that's just not something that was said to entice him. And then end of next season, some difficulties come. And then we're hearing more excuses behind why the ownership 
and the manager don't see eye to eye because if it happens again, we'll know exactly who the main problem is. It won't be the manager, but all eyes and attention will be on our directors and this ownership. So we need to afford some grace. We need to have an open mind. We have to allow Enzo Moresca to work and we have to do this knowing the fact that we're thinking about the long-term gains from this and with the confidence around this decision to hire him. Again, we could have signed many managers with a lot more top flight experience for a fraction of the money. You like to think that Enza Maresca has done something quite special. The club have completely become enamored by him and see him as the ultimate manager to finally take this project off the ground and finally get us challenging. So my friends, I got tons of videos coming out this week around Enzo Maresca. Stay tuned on Blue Lines TV. And on that note, I'm EFC. This is Blue Lines TV. See you guys all later. Cool.